Oh, that's not bad. Yep, same guys that made Absolute Drift, which is also a really fun game. But it looks completely different from the next game, if you've seen the next game that's coming out, uh, Golden Lap. more a motorsport manager type game from the F1 era of like 70s, 80s I think it is. If you're looking at this, don't judge the car design too much. Uh, this isn't in the normal game I made this one. Which is why it sucks. It's been growing on me though. It's been growing on me. needed to make one but this uh, car is the fastest in this class by far 
and it's got all of the default skins are a bit plain.
come on. Alright, cheers for stopping by. Thank you for all again. Oh shit. Have a good day.
That was close. Thank you very much. It's nice to get to use a car for a long period of time. But there being only eight cars in this class means that half of the tracks, or more than half the tracks, because I've got to use this one for its own, more than half the tracks I'm doing on this, and it's I've already done, had to do Germany twice because I fucked up and did one stage wrong. So I've done Germany twice, uh, then Germany wet once, then Kenya, and now Kenya wet. So other than the fact that I I have a serious problem with cutting corners too hard in Kenya. Like not realising that it's not going to just be a hard reset or anything. But there's a cliff there and you're just going to nosedive it. But it's specifically Kenya. I do it a bit in other countries but mostly Kenya. I think because the the colours just don't really work for me. Especially in the rain. Also classic, not actually paying attention to the game. You're mostly watching the cycling on a second screen. <laughs> you know. Hi, Dee Dee. Fuck! Green thing. going to break the car. No, it's alright, I've turned damage off. <laughs> Rocks appearing out of nowhere. It's fine, the car's indestructible. Though I am fucked when we go back into um, 
That is not good. Ooh. I've seen that, yeah. I'm watching the cycle at the minute, speaking of breaking the car. Guy's chain keeps falling off. What the fuck's going on with his chain? How bad is that road? What the fuck? His chain is going... Thrrr. I think something's caught in it. Or he's got a bent link or something. He's just had to put the chain back on because it fell off the front. But now it's like it's pedaling, but it's going up and down. Either something's caught in it in something. The, uh, the tensioner. The tensioner... Oh, it got wrapped around itself, I think. I know why it's rattling now then. Yeah, if it got wrapped around itself, there's a chance that it bent itself out of skew. That's rough. That's a full bike change, that is. Like, you just made it into the breakaway. And you, your car's not, his car's not even behind him. He's not going to be able to get a bike. He's got to get a bike change, because you can't pedal that. That's rough. I hope that's... I hope that something random caused that because the other option is that someone's put a worn out chain and a worn out uh, cog on that bike. That's the, that's the usual cause. If I were looking at a random person's bike, that would be the first thing I'd be looking at. Is the chain knackered? Is it the wrong size chain? But like, it's a professional, so I'm not thinking it's that. I'm thinking it's more likely to have been something random caused a jam. Jesus. As I was saying, when I actually get back into Catface after doing all this and severe damage is on, the amount of times that I've used fucking rocks as a way to slow down. Like I need to need to stop relying on the fact that if I'm sliding off the track and I see that I'm about to slide into a rock that that is perfectly okay. Because at the minute it's like, okay, sliding off. I hit the rock and I stop. It's fine. And it's better than not hitting the rock. Sliding off completely. Um, five seconds. It's triple caution. I am often surprised that we haven't seen anything in cycling uh, like flags like sometimes there are but they tend to be a person stood in front of a permanent obstacle like uh, road furniture kind of you know if there's a pedestrian crossing where they've got a centre gap between the two roads then there'll be somebody and there's a curb and everything that you'd crash into and bollard or whatever there'll be someone stood in front of it with a with a flag especially if it comes up to a roundabout where there'll be someone stood in front of it with a flag triangle flag pointing in the direction you want to go 
There'll always be some people who go the wrong way around the roundabout, and that's always funny. You see like one or two people who miss the roundabout and go the wrong way around the roundabout. But it is absolute chaos. I think the only reason it doesn't come come to it with like because we've got motos in every group, commissaire motos. I think the only reason that no one has anything is because the riders themselves point everything out. It's like standard from when you first start riding in a club. You'll just hear people shouting "pot," pointing down, "pot car," point out. Confuses the shit out of cars because the hand signals are slightly different from actually indicating. Of course, like a parked car, a parked car or a pedestrian walking on the road or runner or whatever on the road that you need to pull out for, but you're not actually trying to indicate. That's a hand behind your back pointing the direction you want to go. Group B short movie. I might have. I've seen quite a few of those sort of things. Feel free to link it in chat though. I believe links are set to followers only. So check your following and you should be able to send a link. He's fucked. There's no way he's getting back on. Absolutely no chance. It's always heartbreaking when you see someone who does get back on after having a problem like that, having a mechanical. They get back on. And it's, there's a long way to go in this one. But sometimes they'll get back on and if it's in the like last like 15, 20 kilometers, they get back on to the front group and you're like, fuck, you would have won this shit if you'd had that level of energy to spend. And then you just hope that they at least get the most combativ the combativity award. Most combative rider. Also called the most aggressive rider, but usually that's yes, a bit a bit of a mistranslation. It's the animator of the race, it's the guy who goes off the front when no other fuck is doing anything. One guy won it in the Tour de France last year. N everybody knew that the sprinters really wanted the stage. Perfectly flat stage, the sprinters wanted it, so the te sprint teams were going to do it. No one went off the front. One chap sends it. Goes off the front. He was out there for 125 kilometres or something, on his own, just out the front, riding on his own, taking in the views, being absolute, he, he literally dictated the pace of the race because the teams would ride exactly to keep him at one minute so if he sped up a bit they'd speed up a bit to keep him at exactly one minute time gap so that they knew exactly when they wanted to they could just have him back and he knew that but you need somebody to go off the front because otherwise they literally won't no one will ride if people don't try and go off the front. Because the group had to keep him at... A, a reasonable, because otherwise he'd fuck off. If they don't keep themselves moving, then... Uh, that one guy's going to win the stage on his own from the longest breakaway ever, because he's just going to ride. If you don't...
That wasn't the greatest. A sub 40 minutes that I'm happy with that and I think yeah my preconceived I might do that for uh, my long for my like one that I'm gonna grind get good time on that yeah Kenya wet or dry in group S sounds kind of good cheers Tabo